Hello, DGENs. Welcome to Degenerate Takes NFL Week 7 Best Bets, Locks, and Predictions. I, of course, am the Brofict One, AJ. Joining me, as always, is the man with the numbers, the Sportsbook Whisperer, college basketball guru, daddy of the diamond, all hail the king of the links, Mr. Noah Engelbretson. And everyone, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that we can quit our day jobs. Noah, how the hell you doing today, Bob? Hey, man. Sun's game today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can get as excited about that as you can. I am, I, I still have Game Seven bad taste in my mouth, so I'm down on the Suns. But I can't even talk about basketball right now, Noah. We are knee deep into NFL action, seven weeks in. Uh, we know some teams that will not take a loss or will not win this week. But hey, we got some juicy matchups all along the way, brother. I'm ready for it. Yeah, AJ, and again, the slate looks really, really good for the most part again this week. Oh, yeah. um, I'm ready to go four weeks in a row without a losing record. Ooh. Uh, yeah, first three weeks were not pretty. <laughs> Never are. But I've been plus units for three weeks in a row. We're trying to make that four. So but if you make it four, you know, I think then we come up with a nickname. Hey, until we're, I don't know. I, I'm going to hold off until we're at eight week, like week eight or nine. And if I'm positive units on the season by week eight or nine, then maybe. But, you know, rough, rough start to the season. The first three weeks were not pretty. Um, I had two really good weeks. Last week was barely, barely positive, but it was still a plus unit. I was uh, 500 on my record on my picks, but I was plus money very slightly on the units. So Hey, hey you got to take plus units whenever you can get it. And Noah, you know, we all start off rough early in the season. And let's go ahead and get right into it, because these two teams have definitely started off rough. That being the Colts going to the Titans to start off our Sunday slate. Um Titans two point favorite at home total 42 and a half points. Noah public is loving the Colts plus the points 56% of the bets, 55% of the money. Noah, one statement that has stuck with me throughout this season is when you pointed out to me that these two teams are the exact same different. And people. one team does it. And one, one team does it a little bit better. Yes. And one team does it a little bit better. And so far in history this year, it's been the Colts. However, however, Noah, one huge stat that we uncovered while we were talking off air, Mike Rabel off a bye. He's uh he's pretty good. Isn't he Noah? He is pretty good. Is in never lost off the bye Ooh. as a head coach. Oh, is that right? Never, never lost off the bye four and Oh, after the bye week, Mike Vrabel is. Um, if you want to extend it a little bit farther, take into account, you know, when you have a Thursday night game and then a Sunday game the next week. Uh, when Mike Vrabel has had more than a week to prepare for his opponent, he is 8 0. He is 8 0. 4 0 off the bye, 4 0 following a Thursday night game. I know they didn't play on Thursday night, so that's not like not fully relevant, but I but, think it's partially relevant here yeah. because. When Vrabel has time to prepare for his next opponent, he's very good. Very good. And I think it's very good as in never lost. <laughs> and no, I think it's definitely one of those games that you kind of lean into that trend. This Colts team has been a team that has been able to get fit, like beaten. And I mean, beaten the brakes I, I, off. I take that back. I take that back. He has one loss and that was last year in the playoffs because they had the bye week. True. And they lost to the Bengals. True. But if but we're talking regular I, season football. I, I put that mainly on Ryan Tannehill, not on, on not on Vrabel for that one. Um, hey, Barry, but Vrabel, regular season Vrabel, very very good off the bye, very very good when he's got time to prepare. Yeah, and I mean off of that and the fact that the Colts have been playing the way the Colts have been playing, and still with, littered with injuries on defense. Uh, give me the Titans minus the two. Uh, Forty two and a half. I'm tempted to take that under because I think this is going to be a ground and pound game. And actually, I just talked myself into it. Give me the under 42 and a half as well. Yeah, I mean, last time these two teams played, I think Jonathan Taylor had about 25 yards rushing and Derrick Henry went over 100. He probably had like 30 touches. I don't have the stats in front of me. But 
Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I two and a half. I'm easily, easily on the Titans at home. Yes. And here's the thing: they win this game, they win the division. Absolutely. Because they, they, they sweep the Colts, which is with the tiebreaker and everything essentially a full extra game yeah outside of record it's a full game because that's the number one tiebreaker so they have a or a half a game whatever whatever you want to call it but they have a half game or a full game however you want to say that and they're not getting caught they're not getting caught they don't look they look a little bit worse than last year. Obviously, their passing attack, losing AJ Brown, is like their passing game looks pretty dismal. But they have Derrick Henry still. Yeah, they have a decent always defense. Looks abysmal. Let's not even give them some credit. It's always looked kind of rough. It's been a Derrick Henry and, show, and it's going to continue to be the Derrick Henry show. And they look very similar to last year. I mean, last year was just weird because they got the number one seed at with an eleven win record. Um, I think they're going to be a ten or eleven win team again. Like yeah. they're going to go 10 and 7 or 11 and 6 again. They're not going to get the one seed again with that record. I can guarantee you that. Um cuz I think they were 11 and 6 last year and somehow got the one seed because of tiebreakers. Yeah. Because the AFC was so competitive and so spread out. I think the AFC is going to be really competitive and spread out again, but they're going to get like the 3 or 4 seed with a 10 10 or 11 win record, but Man, I feel good about my take that the Titans were easily the best team in this division. And actually, I only feel half good about it because the Titans look worse than I thought they were. But the rest of this whole, not the whole division, but the Colts look way worse than I thought they were going to. And I I don't expect Jacksonville or Houston to contest for this division. Yeah, I mean, Titans Titans at home give me a minus two and a half. Uh, These are the same two teams. Titans just do the same thing slightly better. Yeah, absolutely. And moving on to a game that doesn't make any sense to me, but I love the line. Uh, Giants visiting the Jaguars in Duval County. Uh, Giants plus three on the road. Uh, total at 42, 42 and a half, depending on the book you're shopping at. This game opened at one and a half with the Giants still as underdogs. And Noah, I have tried to look at this game every which way possible, and I cannot in my mind of minds think of a way – that Jacksonville not only should be favored, but favored by a field goal. I mean, you want to go ahead and throw, yeah, they're at home. I like the line at one and a half, but it's not at one and a half anymore. It's been bet to three, and you have 64% of the bets with only 49% of the money on the Giants. That means 36% of the bets are on Jacksonville. So the Sharps, the Sharps are on Jacksonville. The big money is on Jacksonville. I It doesn't make any sense to me, Noah. It doesn't, and that's why I, I'm not going to think about it because it hurts my brain too much. Give me the Giants. Give me a money line. They're going to keep this winning going. I like what Dayball's doing there, and Danny Dimes seems to have finally found his rhythm. Whether the rest of his offense is going to show up, that's a question for another time, but Saquon seems to be doing his job. Give me the Giants plus the three money line. Give me every which way possible. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I'm also on Giants money line. I just think it's funny. You know, we have a poverty team here that is going to rip off 11 or 12 wins this season. Yeah. And prob- probably get bounced in the first round of the playoffs. Like, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're a bad team that I still expect to win double-digit games. <laughs> and and it blows my mind, but they have a weak schedule they don't have the talent to do anything in the playoffs, but they have the weak ass schedule and kind of the momentum to make the playoffs with a halfway decent record. And I'm sure Daniel Jones and Saquon probably gone during this off season. And they're going to completely dive into their rebuild. Um, but that that's next year. That's next, next year. This is next this year. year. Problem. This is this year. This is this problem. 
and the Giants are playing better. They are the better team than Jacksonville. They should win this game. I'm taking the Giants' money line. I'm not thinking twice about it. Not even a second thought. Moving on. I hate everything about this game, Noah. I will not be watching this game. I will barely read the fucking box score for this game. That game being the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to the Panthers. Uh, Panthers 11-point dogs at home. It did open at 5.5. Total is at 40. What do you want me to do with this game? 11 points? You are asking me as a responsible gambler to lay 11 points with this Tom Brady and Buccaneers team? I understand. I get it. The Panthers are god-awful. But there is nothing to support the fact that not only the Buccaneers... I, I, the Buccaneers will win the game. All right, The Buccaneers will win the game. Yeah. They are technically oh, yeah. the better oh, yeah. team. But you're asking me to lay 11 effing points with Tom Brady and the way this offense is performing? I don't even know if they're going to score 11 points. Noah, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? I take Carolina plus the 11 as bad as Carolina is. I mean, um, you know, what's the old saying? You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, I mean, I... Tampa Bay's not good enough to. I'm I'm not saying they can't cover eleven, but they're not good enough to consistently cover eleven, even against the worst teams in the NFL. Which is why I have no problem taking Carolina as much as I hate Carolina and hate everything they're doing, and they're not a good football team. The Buccaneers are not good enough to like be a confident lay an eleven point favorite on them uh i'm taking carolina what's the over under at this game 40 40 i'm on the under under 40 give it to me i'm with you on the under there noah but i'm gonna go back to a saying that i have you don't win money betting against brady i'm not gonna bet against brady here i'm going for this season i'm gonna suffer here i'm gonna suffer Noah. i know i'm i know what i'm doing to myself i already took the cardinals this week so i can't hurt anymore um Give me Brady, give me the 11, and uh, women a prayer, honestly. If we could take a moment and pray for that bet. Thank you. Uh, moving along, Noah, your struggling Green Bay Packers are going to the maybe on the market Washington Commanders. I mean, the whole Dan Snyder thing is an absolute wreck. Absolute wreck. I mean, that is unbelievable, the train wreck going on there. And in the owners' meeting, nothing coming of that. But let's talk about football. Noah Packers, four-and-a-half favorite, four point favorites on the road. Total at 41-and-a-half. Public, heavily on the commanders here. 52% of the bets, 81% of the money. All right, Noah, make the case. Why am I betting on the Packers this week? You said the public is on the commanders that heavy. 81% of the money. The public is that heavy on a two and four team playing the Green Bay Packers. Yes, Noah. That's funny. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's it's just it's just funny. It's comical. A bunch of people are gonna lose some money. Um I was on the Giants two weeks ago. I thought the Packers were going to bounce back against the Jets. They didn't, but the Jets do look pretty damn good, if I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Washington does not look good. No. The Packers have to right the ship at some point, and they will at some point this season. And so I'm kind of in the in the boat where I'm at the point where I'm going to keep betting on that to happen until it doesn't. Because at some point they're going to right the ship and then there's going to be a two or three week window where people are still doubting them and it's going to be great money making season to bet on the Packers against the spread. And then the books will catch up about three to four weeks after the Packers actually write the ship. This could very well be the game. Washington does not look very good. They barely beat the Bears. They barely beat the um, Bears. Yeah, pack, I mean, Packers minus five yeah. on this one. Easy, easy to me. 
Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I still don't think the Packers are like a big powerhouse yet. But as I said at the beginning of the season, you know, I acknowledged there were going to be some growing pains. There's been some more than I was anticipating. But I think by week eight or week 10, the maybe not week eight, we're already at week seven, but by week 10 or 11, I think the Packers are going to really prove themselves as like, I think that offense is going to start gelling. I think the defense has not been bad. I think people are giving a lot of shit to the defense because the offense and special teams has put them in such shitty situations that they've given up points. But if you look at like yards, they're like probably just outside of the top five. Yeah. Um, the defense is really good. Just the points allowed hasn't reflected that. The fact that we only have one turnover for us this season reflects that, but that's not going to be sustainable. The Packers aren't going to like, you know, one turnover through six weeks. We're not going to go the whole season and only have three takeaways, right? We'll see. Like, like the Packers are going to start taking the ball away. They're going to start doing things. Um, Rashawn Gary absolute monster will contest Micah Parsons for defensive player of the year this year. He, he, he's got the high, he's got the highest pressure rate of any pass rusher in the league so far. He's got over a sack a game. The, the, the turn of, like the takeaways will come for the Packers defense and yardage wise. They've been very good points wise. They haven't been great, but once those turnovers start coming, it's going to be a big difference. Once the offense starts gelling, it's going to be a big difference. I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen yet, but give it three or four more weeks. I think we're going to get there, and the Packers are going to start looking really dangerous by about week 11, 12. We're playing Washington. I'm not worried. Yeah, I'm not either. Packers give me games. Packers minus the four and a half. It's the easy bet. It's the bet of the weekend, I think. The sports books, I think, are dangling a lot of stuff out there and seeing if the public will take it. And the public obviously not taking it with how much is on that uh, that's ridiculous that is ridiculous and noah i want to talk about something else that is absolutely fucking ridiculous okay and that is the amount of people on the detroit lions at jerry world at cowboys cowboys seven point favorites at home total at 48 and a half noah 53 percent of the bets 85 percent of the money on the lions to cover that spread i can't do it i won't do it Dak Prescott coming back off injury. I mean, I'm not saying he has something to prove because of that contract, but after Cooper Rush performed the way he did, he cannot come home, literally come home to Jerry World and lose to the Lions coming off injury. Give me the Cowboys. Give me Dak. Give me the seven points. I hate that I'm betting on the Cowboys so much, and I want to bet on the Lions here. I really do, but I just do not see, I don't see it with the Lions this week. I'm sorry, I don't. Not with the way that Dallas Cowboys defense has been playing all season long. I don't care if you're the number two offense in the league. You're not, it's not that, they can't. They can't. They're also they're also the number 32 defense. So, um, as much as I wanted to buy into the Lions and be like, okay, the Lions are back. Hard knocks really helped drill that in. It, they're not, they're no. not. There's still the Lions. Um, I think they have a lot of things like to be optimistic about in the future, but yes. this year's not it. No, not it. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott has looked pretty damn decent the last two weeks, which it's been a year and a half, maybe two years since we've seen Zeke look good. And he's looked good the last two weeks. I think Zeke is ready to have a monster game. We were right on the brink of Zeke maybe losing that starting job to Tony Pollard. And he's had two really good weeks. I think he has a monster week against the Lions at home yes. this week. I don't think Dak's going to be particularly impressive, probably not going to be doing too much. But I think Zeke does a lot. I think Tony Pollard probably has a decent week as well. The Dallas rushing game is probably going to go nuclear against the Lions this week. So if you have Zeke or Pollard on any of your fantasy teams, please do yourself a favor. Put them in the starting lineup yes. because they're both going to have monster games. Yes. Uh, 
I don't know what the over under is in this game, AJ, but I love it for the over 48 and a half. Oh yeah. Yeah. This game's going over 48 and a half. E- easy. Well, decently easy. Dallas does have a really good defense. Uh, New England shut down Detroit. Dallas might be able to shut down that offense pretty well. Uh, but I think Dallas scores a lot of points in this game. I have no problem laying the seven points on Dallas. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. And I have no problem laying the points in the next game. That being the Falcons going to Cincy to visit the Bengals. Uh, Bengals six point favorites at home. 47 and a half is the total. I mean, don't get me wrong, Noah. Don't get me wrong because I was on the Falcons last week. And I think this Falcons team is a hell of a lot better than everyone thought. And that's why it's been bet down from 10 to 6. Uh, but I, uh, you know, the key for anyone beating the Bengals is getting to Joe Burrow. And it's not hard to get to Joe Burrow. But I haven't seen enough out of that defensive line to make me believe that they can beat the Bengals offensive line. So give me the Bengals minus the 6. Um I, 47, 47 and a half. I do think it's going to end up being a 23, 24 game or not. Obviously not. You know what I mean? It's going to be a close game. I don't think it gets that high. So I think I'm taking the under there. Yeah. 47 and a half. Yeah. I'm staying off of over under on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take the dirty birds to cover six and a Ooh, half. I respect um, it. I respect it. They're, they're not They're. Mm, fuck uh, um you have seattle you have seattle and atlanta who are both not supposed to be very good teams i believe atlanta's over under was at either four and a half or five and a half seattle's was uh you know a half a game or a game lower than that uh they're both sitting at three and three um they're both scrappy they both have terrible rosters but they're scrappy Atlanta's got a really fucking weak schedule. Yes. Um, so at the end of week 13, if you look forward at, at Atlanta's schedule, I think there's a very real possibility we have a 7-5 and five Atlanta team at the end of week 13, and then they have a tough... Uh, then they got to play the Saints and the Bucks a bunch of times. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but... Atlanta could very well be like a seven and five team after week 12. Yeah. Or after week, after week 13 rather, because they have a bye week in there, but it'll be interesting. And I'm not ruling Atlanta out for the playoffs, which is scary because they are not a very good team. Yeah. And if they do end up, if they do end up with a wild card because of their cupcake schedule, somebody's going to have a really easy first round playoff matchup, yeah. but we'll see. Uh, I, I, just, I just, you know, fucking kudos to everybody uh, who who's running that whole show with Atlanta right now. They have a trans purely transitional roster right now. Yes, um, absolutely. And they got a Marcus the draft Mar- and that's not going to help right here. Mariota is not who they want as their long-term quarterback. He was in there to bridge a one or two year gap until Desmond Ritter's ready to play. Mariota's playing pretty damn good. They have no fucking receivers. They have Kyle Pitts, who's been very quiet. If you're a fantasy owner who has Kyle Pitts, you're probably frustrated about his performance. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Calvin Ridley should be coming back next year. Yeah. If he decides to come back to football, I don't know. We'll see. But we don't even know if he's coming back. Yeah, but man, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm there. There's very few teams in the league that I would take to cover six plus points against the Falcons right now. Which I can't believe I'm saying that, but there, there are very few teams I would take to cover six plus points against the Falcons. Fair enough. And you know, moving on to a game that I think will be easier for us to digest you got the browns visiting the ravens ravens six and a half point favorites at home uh 45 and a half is the total now don't get me wrong the ravens have been choking a lot they have been choking they are giving the color purple meaning yet again since the vikings seem to win games still um 
Noah, what are your thoughts? Because I, I still want to take the Ravens. I still want to take Lamar Action Jackson. It's less than a touchdown. I think they'll win by a touchdown, but we're getting to the point where I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, I, Ravens at home. Yeah, you're right. That's a great hometown. Great yeah, hometown. Yeah, Ravens, Ravens at home, six and a half. I'm not too worried. I'm, I'm taking it. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, moving along, this line, I love this line. I love this line. No, it opened at seven and a half, and it's now down to a pick em. You got the Jets going to mile high to play the Broncos with 87% of the bets, 85% of the money all over the Jets. Total at 38 and a half. It's Zach Wilson, right? Denver sucks. Yeah, like but that Denver... defense, that defense is solid. Yeah, yeah, but that defense, that defense, that defense keeps carrying them to one, two, three point losses. So, you know what? That defense is outweighed by how terrible that offense is, and it doesn't fucking matter to me. I I'm not there there's maybe like 3 or 4, maybe 5 teams in the entire league that I would pick Denver to beat at this point. Like they look bad. They are in disarray. They are not good on offense. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Melvin Gordon, who somehow was splitting carries with Javante Williams, now doesn't get any carries because Latavius Murray and Mike Boone are taking all the carries from him after Javante Williams got injured. I don't think there's any identity to this Denver offense. Um, you know, head coach Nathaniel Hackett coming from the Packers. Like I've said before, he was never calling plays. He was never doing any of that with the Packers. Uh, I, I'm sure he he was doing something of value, but gets a head coaching job. I I did wasn't sure about that hire, and it does not look good. No. Uh, Russ does not look good. No, he and is he's not got plenty. Of- he is not unlimited. He has, he, he has plenty of receiving weapons, so you can't even blame it on that. The offensive line is fine. Uh, Denver just... I, I think they have a lack of identity yeah. as a team. Absolutely. And the Jets are off to a 4-2 and two start. The Jets look great. Zach Wilson's, what, 3-0 and now? Something, as a starter yeah, this Yeah, 3-0 season? as a starter. Uh, I think he goes 4-0 and this week. They beat Denver. I'm kind of surprised that Denver is even favored in this game. I get they have one of the better home field advantages out of any like team in the NFL, but give me the Jets money line. No problem about it. And yeah. and uh, what's the over under at? Because I want the under. 38. Yeah, under 38. I feel under it. I'm 38. Not it, but I feel it. Um, all right, this game's easy. The public is making it weird. Texans go into the Raiders. You got the Raiders as seven point home favorites. Uh, total at 45 and a half. No, you got 35% of the bets, 88% of the money on the Texans to cover that touchdown. Now, don't get me wrong, the Raiders haven't looked good this season, but the Texans have looked fucking awful this season. I I have been trying to convince myself to take the Texans in good spots. I do not think this is one of those spots. I think the Raiders get a convincing win, get a win, a much needed win um, over the Texans at home. Give me the seven. Give me the Raiders. Yeah, interesting. So 88% of the money, that definitely sways, sways my view a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, that's sharp money. That's good money, especially with only 35% of the bets. That's big money. I still think that I, I still think the Texans are very underestimated. Yes. Which is why I have a hard time with this one. But the Raiders are a better team. I think the Raiders have severely underperformed. I think they're due for a couple big showings. I'm going to buy this one down to six and a half. Respectable. That's respectable. And take the, Ra- take the Raiders at six and a half. Can't blame um, it there. Yeah, that's all I got for this. I mean, 
Derek Carr and Devontae Adams have to start clicking at some point. Some point. I mean, new offense for Devontae, so I get kind of the weak points and everything like that, the slow start. But you definitely need Devontae to start picking it up eventually. You know what I mean? You gave away so much for him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they gave up two firsts and two seconds for Devontae Adams, so... Start producing, bud. Start I, I, producing. It ain't his fault. Uh, and it's not necessarily Carr's fault either. I mean, Devontae's getting double teamed like crazy. Yeah. No, nothing you can do about uh, that. It's great coverage. I mean, he's their number and, one receiver. Carr, Carr is a good quarterback, but he's not Aaron Rodgers level where Aaron Rodgers can literally fit like Aaron Rodgers can literally force the ball within the tiniest of fucking windows. Carr's a great quarterback. He just can't narrow the ball down to that slim of a window there. Aaron Rodgers can routinely. And um, I, I think they're going to start clicking eventually Carr and Adams. Yeah. But you know, they, they've been away from each other for almost a, you know, the better part of a decade. So they gotta, they gotta get that juju back. They gotta get that chemistry back. And once they start clicking, they could be really dangerous. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm still getting flashbacks whenever someone says dangerous. Um, Moving on, Noel. (laughs) Let's go to the Seahawks visiting the Chargers. Chargers six-point favorites at home. Total at 51 and a half. Public is grossly over the Seahawks. I mean, makes me sick almost. 84% of the bets, 95% of the money on the Seahawks. This is a no-brainer for me. Give me my once Super Bowl favorite Chargers minus the six at home. I know they haven't covered a game all season. Have they not? No, they have covered, but like they didn't cover last week, and that's oh. you know, and that's the most recent memory I have. Oh, I, so I thought you were saying I thought you were saying they're zero and six against the spread. No, they are not that bad. But I mean, if the public is on the Seahawks that much they're seeing what they want to see. They bet it down from eight and a half to six and a half. Give me the chargers to cover by a touchdown. Yeah. I'm even seeing it at six, even. Yeah. I'm seeing it. Some um, places too. Yeah. AJ couldn't have said it better myself. The fact that the public is so heavy on the Seahawks and, and like the Falcons, this, you know, Seahawks are in the same boat, a team that was expected to be shitty. Although I expect it, I bought into the Seahawks being shitty. I didn't buy into the Falcons being as shitty as people thought they were going to be. Yeah. The Seahawks are still not a good team. They're yeah. three and three. Geno Smith has looked great this season. He's looked really great. The rest of that team looks not very good. Um, I mean, DK and Tyler Lockett and Geno look, look great. The rest of the team does not look that great. They've still managed to muster up a three and three record. Kudos to them for that. But the Chargers are a much better team. They're playing at home, which for the Chargers is not really much of a home field advantage, especially playing probably Seattle. There's going to be a lot of Seahawks fans there. I still think the Chargers win by more than a touchdown. I mean, Justin Herbert has to be getting healthier and healthier every week. Austin Eckler is playing absolutely out of his mind. Tremendous. Uh, And he deserves some more respect than he gets. I feel like people look at him as like a really good fantasy running back and nothing else than that. Um, He's pretty undersized. He's not a big guy. He puts up really good rushing and receiving numbers. Obviously he gets the attention for the receiving numbers, but he's a really good running back too, running the ball. That's just my little PSA, my little nugget. Put some more respect on Austin Eckler. He is, he is a top 10 or top 15 running back in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. Even, he even, is, at, he's even, at, even as a pure runner. Even as a pure runner. Yeah, um, he's, he's one Eckler's, of the best. Eckler's great. No, Eckler's absolutely. great. Absolutely. And the Chargers, Chargers win this game by more than a touchdown. Hopefully. But I do want I do want the over on this game. I don't... What's it at? 51. 
Oh, I was expecting like 56, 57. We'll take 51 every day of the week. man. Give me 51 on this one because Seattle's offense has been very capable of scoring points. So. I, I agree. And well, I'm interested to hear your take on this over under as the Chiefs go to visit the 49ers. Uh, not uh, Chiefs are two and a half point favorites on the road. Uh, 48 and a half is the total. Noah, 82% of the bets, 77% of the money all over the Chiefs. Two and a half point favorites. Don't get me wrong. The Chiefs have been playing not like the Chiefs lately. And I mean, I think the public, I think everyone is grossly overreacting to that loss to Buffalo. I think that was just Buffalo getting their win back. However, Noah, I don't know why, but I see this as an utter let up spot not only for the public but for the chiefs give me the 49ers plus two and a half plus three at some books and also give me the money line i'm going to sprinkle that a bit yeah well it's hard one 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 more thing i want to i do want to say that has nothing to do with my faith in the 49ers it just has to do with my lack of faith in the chiefs oh boo 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 Chiefs are the third best team in the NFL right now behind Philly and Buffalo. I'm not worried about the Chiefs at all. The 49ers are just a weird fucking team because they're a coin flip every week. They're good enough to beat just about anybody, and they're also bad enough to lose to just about anybody. I I have the hardest time picking games every week that the 49ers are in. Because you never know which San Francisco team is going to show up. And and they're going to be hard-pressed to make the playoffs, but they might make the playoffs. Yeah. And the scary thing is, if they make the playoffs with that sixth or seventh wildcard seed, they might make it to the NFC Championship again. They might somehow fucking make it to the Super Bowl. I hate it. I hate everything San Francisco 49ers. I hate that franchise. Um and, and now they piss me off betting-wise, too, so I hate them even more. Uh, I don't know how to bet this team. They make zero sense. They're playing at home. I could see them somehow beating the Chiefs, but I could also see them losing by, like, 25 points. That being said, I'm going to take the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are a very good, sound football team. I'm going to take them to cover the 2.5, and, and I'm going to take under 48.5, though, because I do think this game goes under. Fair San enough. Francisco, their, their defense still looks pretty good pretty damn good and their offense looks pretty damn bad so seems like a good under recipe it does seem like a good under recipe i'm staying away from the total there uh moving on sunday night football noah we got this concussion bowl you could say uh as the steelers go to miami to visit to money mitch and the Dolphins, um, report stating uh, Kenny Pickett may be ready to go and would be the starter then uh, if he is cleared from concussion protocols. Noah, that's just what I'm reading. It, we could be seeing Kenny Pickett versus Tua here. Um, nothing official yet, obviously. Dolphins seven point favorites at home though. Forty four and a half is the total. Noah, this opened up at four and a half and has been bet up to seven. I uh, was 62% of the bet, 74% of the money on the Dolphins. Uh, I don't want to bet this game because I don't know about Tua. I know I've read the reports that say it was a back I don't want to watch. Finger. I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch this game. No. Because if Kenny Pickett is playing, if Tua is playing, I I, I, I don't want to watch two people die on the field no like and and Pickett's concussion didn't look super serious I don't know what the whole deal is with the concussion protocols and everything the fact that Tua is probably playing this game and and you know me AJ I, I wouldn't especially a primetime football game. I don't ever miss those. I don't no, ever not never. watch those. Never. But I have I have half of mine not to watch because I... <sighs> yeah, and as somebody who has experienced multiple concussions too and been knocked out from one and been black, you know, blacked out for a minute, minute and a half, um, I, 
I just it, it's yeah. I I was so pissed after the last one. If it happens again and Tua takes a head, shot to the head, I just I I don't even have words for like for you know what what I'll be. I'm with emotionally Noah. feeling and I think during that's that. Why. So it's and I think I, I I don't I don't want to see Tua playing yet. And and the sad thing is, like you know, all the medical experts say he's fine to play. And the fact is, I'm now at the point where I don't trust NFL medical experts. I don't trust them. After what I saw just a couple weeks ago, I don't think Tua should be on the field for 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 this week. He probably shouldn't be on the field for another month or two. Like, yeah, and Kenny Pickett just getting a concussion last week. If he plays, I mean, how how can you? Uh, I'm sorry, how can the brain heal in one week, less than a week from said concussion in order to play football? No, I say we do the one thing that we have never done on this show before, and I say we abstain from a pick in this one because I'm not, I, I don't want to watch it. Honestly, I'm just hoping both guys make it out okay, and I don't want to be worrying about no spread or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's that that's fair. I, I obviously am still going to watch the game because yeah. I am such a football fan. But God, I hope the God neither of these quarterbacks, if they do both play, I hope neither of them take any shots to the head because it, it, it could be bad. It could be bad. Yeah, could be bad. Let's move on, though, Noah. I wish it was to a happier note, but it is our last game of the week, that being Monday Night Football, the absolute barn burner that will be the Chicago Bears going to New England. Uh, New England, seven-and-a-half-point favorites at home. Um, and the public's on them. Bill Belichick's record against the rookie head coach is impeccable. I, the Bears fucking suck. Uh, I think that is a perfect recipe for Patriots minus seven and a half and under 40. Yeah. Patriots just beat the lions. What? 39 to zero or yep. a 20, no 29 to zero. Um, <laughs> the lions offense is ranked number two in the NFL. The bears are right. Probably last. I, I don't, have the stats in front of me to confirm that, but the bears are probably last. If not dead last, they're close to last in offensive production. Mm-hmm. And the Patriots defense looks really sound. They have their system offense in place. I think the Patriots win by 20 plus points in this game at home. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're going to win big. They're going to win big on Monday night and we might have some exciting football. Probably not. We're Ooh. probably going to see Belichick run the ball 75 times we- again. Do we have uh, do we have Bailey Zappi, or do we have Mac Jones? Back? I believe last reports I saw, it's believed Mac Jones is going to return for this game. Boo! I want I Zappi. I want Zappi too. I think we all do, but hey, we'll have to deal with Mac Jones and the same Patriots offense it's been for the last twenty five years. Noah, that's the end of the slate. You have anything else to say to the D Gens about NFL Week Seven before we sign off? Yeah, I just want to say I have nothing against Mac Jones. Him and Bailey Zappi are literally the same person. They yes. do the same exact things. Yes. It doesn't matter. No. The 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 Patriots literally have Mac Jones and then a clone of Mac Jones named Bailey Zappi. So um I guess the good news is if you're the Patriots, Mac Jones does get farther injured. Like you literally have Mac Jones to replace Mac Jones, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it works in the offense, makes everything good. And I got nothing else except to say, hey, like, share, subscribe to the channel to make sure that we can quit our day jobs. And go ahead and follow us on the socials. Hit that link tree down below in the description. and Let us know your lock of the week in the comments. And, yeah, with that being said, I've been the Brofect1AJ. That is the Money Train Noah, and we'll see you next time on Degenerate Takes.